What is your least favorite thing about millennials? And go! Uh, <laughs> you know what I hate about millennials? Tell us what you hate. <laughs> God bless them. I hate how... I am so excited. Do you want to know why? Well, ask me why. Because, because my brother, who none of you know about, is about to get on my channel. Well, help me bring him in. His name is Byron Rogers. <laughs> Look at this badass water bottle. You don't even need to look at his face. You just look at this water bottle and you can tell what he's about. Just from this, he's like, I need more of the camera. <laughs> oh, such a Rogers. We're just two members of the Rogers clan. <laughs> that was in his face. Oh, Byron. Byron, hey. how are you today? I'm good. It's, it's good so to good to have you on my channel. Yeah, it's good to be here. So where are we right now? We are in the Dominican Republic right now, hanging out. What? We're doing the Santo Domingo kind of thing? Yeah, we are. And share some wisdom to my generation, the millennials, because we have a lot of labels, and I would like you to share with us what you really think we are as a generation. Let's just get controversial. I feel like the generation before me, the generation I feel more part of, mm -hmm. it was all about working for results to validate who you are. Like I see some gigantic differences. Mm -hmm. The first one that I would, I would mention would be in the department of work ethic and in the department of discipline. I feel like that approach to work and productivity and your worth being tied to your fruit, meaning Fruit, what you meaning produce. the results of your labor. And that is something that's very demonized. I feel like this generation has been conditioned to look for, expect, and even feel entitled to participation trophies for things. Yeah, like I saw on the news the other day where in the US of A, a parents put children into these sports camps and they say everyone's a winner. Yeah. There's no winner and there's no loser. Every, that, ugh. Honestly, yes, I'm a millennial, but you all know how weird and ah, I am. I don't really believe in much of what my generation believes in. Yeah. But um, for me, that's like cringe. Like, hell yeah. no, you fight for your win. You're not, it's not supposed to be given to you. Fight for that. Right. Because it takes away everything about it that makes it valuable and makes it special. Yeah. And then on top of that, it trains you not to fight for what you want, which then keeps you in a state of, of lethargy. You don't fight for things that help you become better, you don't develop, and then you end up at age, you get past your 30s, you realize you don't have anything. So I've done life coaching and things like that. I'm a double psych major, and some trends that I see is people get stuck, you know, right after that college phase where they want to do something great with their lives, they've got no struggle credentials because they've been told their entire life that they're great and they're special and they're amazing and they're fantastic and they just love themselves and they've been loving themselves and they haven't been working on themselves. So they look in the mirror. Big difference. They, Did you guys hear what he just said? Yeah. Here, let's repeat that. Let's repeat that one line just again. Yeah. They've been loving themselves. What did I say? But they don't. They're, but they're not working on, they're not themselves, working on themselves, guys. Yeah. So they can't respect themselves. Ooh, you just added a triple. <laughs> you know, so triple whammy. You might love yourself, but you don't know what you're worth. You don't know what you're capable of. You have no struggle credential. Mm. And so what ends up happening is they look at the things they love and the things they want to create, and they're gripped by fear because all those things represent is the unknown. And the fear of the unknown is the most debilitating fear that humans being have to, human beings have to deal with because that fear leaves you in a state of not knowing whether you have what it takes. So I fear something I know, I understand, it's a legitimate danger. I gotta know that, I know where I, I, hey, don't step there, don't do this, don't do that. But the fear of the unknown is so scary because you don't know. Yeah, that's so crazy you do. said that because you I have a quote that says, 
the fear of the unknown cripples you into missing the opportunity to be the best you can be. Exactly. Um, everything that you want in life, your financial freedom, the body you want, the, the everything, the relationship you want, it's all on the other side of the highest form of love that you can pay to yourself, which is discipline. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you know if someone loves you if they can tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Someone tells you what you want to hear, that's kind of a fearful form of parasitic love because they're so afraid of you having positive regard for them, mm -hmm. they can't even just tell you, no, yeah. you do look can't fat in that it, dress. Yeah. Can't tell you you're this watching I this, love probably you. you look fat in the thick <laughs> dress you're wearing right, right now. <laughs> and I'll tell you, because I love you, too much to let you walk outside and make a fool of yourself. I think tough love is one of the highest forms of love. Yeah. And I think that that whole paradigm around the participation trophy and yeah. you're special just because you're here, all that stuff, I think what's so dangerous about it is you, you don't love yourself. You're getting all the love for free. Mm -hmm. The love at that point is like dessert that yeah. you're eating mm -hmm. when it should be like something that you're working for and, and, and it should come from the value you're investing in yourself. Because someone looked at me, they can't take anything from me. Mm -hmm. Because I've worked. What about me? You, you the same, same? Well, it depends. It's Watch you. your words. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> Tough love right here, guys. Let's get some Rogers love. <laughs> Only you know the answer to that, but. I would say for you, there's things people can't take away from you, and those things have to do with the things you've earned through your own struggle credentials. You know what I'm saying? I, I like Marine. that. Yeah, I was a Marine. I went to combat. I went to Iraq. When I was 18, I went and fought in a war. Ain't no man gonna tell me I'm not a man. You know? Your struggle so, is your story. It's true. It's a shirt that Eyes of Beijing is coming up with. Actually, it's already out. Go yeah. and buy it on the Eyes of Beijing store. And the things that have caused you the most pain are the things that you have to do superpowers and those are the things that you have the most authority to speak on. Mm. I can Story. speak to combat veterans because I've been through combat, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I can speak to guys struggling with certain things that I've overcome, you know? And so no matter what your past is, no matter what your pain is and your scars are, you gotta realize there's an alchemy to that that is waiting for you to unlock it. So should you choose, you know? You so gotta, you're saying that millennials aren't allowing themselves to struggle? I think we have a society that's all about ease. Mm. You know, it's all about tolerance. Avoiding. Yeah, tolerance. <laughs> Everyone's special. Everyone gets a trophy. Avoiding pain and moving towards pleasure. When the ultimate realization is simply that it's pain that's actually going to get you what you want in life and help you find that salvation. You've got to find the purpose within the pain and the meaning within the misery to unlock the potential hidden in your process. So you're going through a process right now in life, there's a purpose to it. If you can't find that purpose, the purpose that's hidden inside there to make it better, like I mean, the Bible, I place before you life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life. If you don't believe the Bible, fine, look at everything taking place in reality. You got day and night in the same thing. One's not good, one's not bad. The reality is you need both of them for us. So there's, there's good and bad in everything. The problem we have is perception, perspective. You don't have to manage yourself, you have to manage your mind. You can't manage your situation 90% of the time. But what makes your whole situation good or bad, painful, crushing, empowering, or disempowering is your ability to manage your mind through that challenge. And if you can manage your mind, and you can manage your perception and your perspective, you can find the potential and unlock the potential in your process. I go to the gym because I understand how to lift weights, because I know what it's doing for me. I understand the, I understand the purpose of the pain. Yeah. I have, now I unlock the potential in that process, which is getting the body that I want. So if I didn't understand that purpose, I'd be in the gym like, this hurts, why am I doing this to myself? I think something that's been lost is millennials aren't finding the purpose in the painful processes in life. You know what I mean? Like, go through it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Go on ahead, go on and get some of that. Get punched in the face so you can understand you're not so fragile. You know what I'm saying? Work hard for it, because if you work hard for it, no one can take it away from you. That's Your right. Your dad can't take it from you. That's right. That's right. Oh my goodness, he stopped talking. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Hey, you <laughs> no, just gotta just hop in. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know, Guys, you can tell like, he's my brother, because I don't usually want to talk it, and now I'm just here being like an obedient, respectful <laughs> human being. I can, <laughs> Letting I can my know. elders take the Take the reins! No, but all of that, I hope you guys captured all of that because that right there, like I said, that's wisdom. That is wisdom through his struggle, wisdom through his experiences, wisdom through his relationships, wisdom through self-taught techniques. What is your least favorite thing about millennials? And go! They don't value masculinity.
or they don't understand it even. It's just, it's miserable. There it is, and what is masculinity? That is for another video that him and his wife will be filming with me. Well guys, that is it. No more Byron Rogers. And you can find him where? ByronRogersMotivation.com, ExecutiveProtectionLifestyle.com, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I got a YouTube channel, and I got a podcast, Executive Protection Lifestyle. And it's new. We look alike, we both have Asian eyes. So they chose me to have my name as Beijing, but 